Yeah, she's she's amazing. Yeah, and I just think we have so many people on board that are just such gracious, just teachers. Like even on launch right now, we're just asking each other all kinds of questions. But this continues like during meal times any other time of the day just like so much learning 24 7. yeah yesterday i had a like out of body moment i was <laughs> listening to sebastian and virginia and ashana talk about biology and i was like i would never hear this conversation like on a day-to-day -day basis like i would that's never ever hear this yeah like that's crazy that i'm hearing these terms and i'm somewhat like understanding what they're even talking about <laughs> and i was just like thinking I was like when I go back like I can't talk like speaking like this won't like with my friends is not going to be like they're not going to know what the hell I'm talking about what the heck I'm talking about <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Derek because I went down there one morning and I learned so much about mapping and navigating and like I had so much fun learning thanks Tori we have a brand new vocabulary. I feel like I have this new vocabulary. Yeah. Especially in regards to biological, um, you know, organisms. And yeah, it's pretty cool. That is one thing I really like about the exploration vessels is because they are so interdisciplinary. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, a typical science mission is, has a very specific hypothesis and a very specific expertise uh, staffed to address that research question which is which is really important but um, it doesn't I think the, the nice thing about these vessels is you get that mix of different fields all talking to each other um, mm -hmm. you, you get a lot more insights into to the big picture of, of studying the ocean not just one portion mm -hmm. of it. and those relationships those pilina between all of these different components. Like, I always look for relationships. That's kind of where my mind goes. And so it's so cool to, to just see all these different levels of understanding of the same environment. And so many things, like, tend to overlap with each other. It's so crazy. Not gonna lie, I could probably use some sugar right now. <laughs> I'm just thinking about breakfast. Yeah, I'm just yeah, thinking um, about it. Yeah, your level of excitement has dwindled over this watch. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm very much feeling. I feeling could tell it. this morning. I know I woke up and I was like, it definitely feels like week three. I'm I, definitely I think, yeah, exhausted. I, I felt the same. Yeah. I was just like, oh. Yeah. And I've been warned that around this time, like. Yep. Of yep. the expedition. Yeah, I was talking to Megan about it, like, because she's like, the first two weeks, it's all exciting, and then it's always week three, there's like a little bit of a crash, and then week four, we all get like re energized. And I said, well, actually, the fact that the, um, you know, the we didn't have to wear the masks anymore, I think that was like a, a, a big, like, boost, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, we can relax, we can, you know, we're not, you know, wearing those anymore. Super so vigilant. I, I, and yeah, yeah, so I, yeah, so I think that that helped. With the with their week three kind of slump, but uh, yeah, we you know you get tired because we're it's a it's a nonstop go 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 sort of expedition. <laughs> yeah. But our shipmates like Jake who are going to be out here until yeah. mid October, like oh, oh go for give zoom. me a break. <laughs> what is oh. that on? Hello, the there's uh, two. Uh, huh? There's another one above it. Oh. But this one has a comparison. I know, on its eye. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh. Wow. Oh. There's definitely cool. a parasite in its eye. Yeah. Are these puhi eels? Yes. That does not look fun. No, it's not. I just want to take it off of him and set him free. Yeah. Jake, do we bring a scalpel down with us? Uh, <laughs> nope. What is the on translucent the thing kind of on the rock? That should be a cucumber, I believe. Oh, yeah. 
you can see that. Man. Yeah, it's like really like a wall of like just tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just like hit me at like seven o'clock. I was like, yeah, but that's usually constrained only to the van. As soon as you walk out of here, you're wide awake. I know. I don't know about that actually. Yeah, I don't know about that huh. at all. I don't know about that for <laughs> me. And just so y'all know, uh, Daniel's gonna come relieve me so I can get some breakfast because I have a trip ashore at like eight. Okay. So I'll be hopping Copy. off. Enjoy think about your breakfast. Me. Yeah, I was just saying, think about <laughs> Think about us starving people up here. <laughs> Something I still need to get better at is just like eating even a little bit before I come up here for my lunch. I grabbed two slices of bread. <laughs> two slices of bread. Yeah, if I am hungry at all when I wake up, I'll make a little handwich and have that before I come up. What, you're not eating your famous Amos cookies? No, I still... Uh, doing that, but not not first thing in the morning. That's, uh, <laughs> I would eat that there is an emergency morning. bag down here, though, so and a Cliff Bar. Always need. I have little Fig Newton bars in my room. The uh, and I just forget. The rub with the way we're staffed is if the person who relieves you is uh, sick or has something going on and can't relieve you, is stuck here missing some meals, so. Like when we have the cookies for breakfast. Oh gosh. Uh -oh. Yes. Yeah, I don't know where that came from, but I love it. <laughs> when I accidentally get, when they actually like hit the syrup, yeah. <laughs> we used great. to uh, get corn dogs for breakfast occasionally. Huh. That's just wrong. Yeah, I don't that know. About that. It's you so know? strange. That's like the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't <laughs> shave the mushrooms. <laughs> Ray, don't, don't do that to Sebastian. <laughs> Those mushrooms <laughs> are a delicacy. <laughs> oh. Do you just not like mushrooms or you just don't like them for breakfast? Uh, either it, for me. Uh, yeah. Either for me, too. No, thanks. No. I love that. More for oh, Sebastian. Oh, I love mushrooms, too. Yeah. Mm. I guess you guys just don't have that sophisticated Fish. palate. <laughs> I really so don't have a sophisticated she, palate. She just needs pure sugar. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sebastian's over here. Would you say with your bread, Sebastian, the balsamic? I love the Italian lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> the little balsamic um, glaze on my bread. Adds a little kick of flavor. <laughs> I'm still so grateful for the Chanakovs. Daniel just reminded when he when he came out here after the ship to shore because they were able to show both of them that we saw. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. That is perfect timing. I know. I really hope. Oh my gosh, the cookies and cream ice cream yesterday was so good. <laughs> Can we get a zoom in on this, please? Yep. <laughs> it was. I love the Belgian chocolate. Yeah, that was, that was my good. favorite too, yeah. Got a little bit of both. Way to go. I just went all in on cookies and cream. Go for Zoom. Go on in. What are we looking at? C pen. This C -pen? is definitely a C pen. I don't think we've, s not sure if we've seen this kind. We know if Upshana is up or not somewhere. Pull Zoom. She's definitely asleep. Ah. <laughs> I know. What? Because she got off at four and she skips breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely asleep. That's right. It looks very sad. I know. I was oh, thinking the exact same thing. Back Lurking. All right. Oh, 
the sea urchin looks but like us from RI right about now, waiting for breakfast. Where? Huh? That sea pen looks oh, like us. You said sea urchin. Ah. Yeah. Low blood sugar. And what would breakfast look like for a sea pen? Um, just little <laughs> microorganisms <laughs> and plankton that no, I, I just buy some I'm pretty sure now. it eats squid ink. Squid ink? Yeah, because it's a pen. Oh. For the audience, you did not see the massive eye roll that I just made. <laughs> yes, they did. They heard it. I heard it. <laughs> um, I saw last night when we started the dive, there was some squid ink, like right in front yeah. of the camera. Oh, yeah. 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 There was like a, all over the sides. Yeah, you saw that yeah. in the lounge. And there were even like little squids. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. But... Yeah, I had no idea. I was like, I couldn't believe it was the squid ink. And then it reminded me of the, you made me ink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys well. made me ink. Yeah. That was one inconsistency about that movie I did not like, was that there was a Dumbo octopus in the reef. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, she is a Dumbo octopus. <laughs> it's the right color, too. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's so cute. I don't care that she's not part of the, she, she wouldn't be part of the reef. <laughs> right, too, way too shallow. She's, she's way too cute to not put in there. <laughs> it's glassy calm outside right now. Oh, cool. Wow. Wow. Okay. Mike, you have some Classic. support. Someone else said they were also going to say that joke. Yes. And I also realized we haven't been continuing your geology jokes. Yeah. I, I, I need to think, I need to think of them. Well, I actually, well, I don't know if anybody even get that. I had, a, I had a good one that I texted Val the other day, or yesterday. Um, so once, um, you know, uh, Hannah has been talking a lot about alteration and weathering of, of minerals and rocks. Mm -hmm. So when a uh, clinopyroxene gets weathered, it's a declinopyroxene. Is this declined? <laughs> Is this thing on? Decline. Silence. <laughs> You asked. I, I wasn't going to share it. I did. It, it, it's too early. Like, I'm at the <laughs> point right now where... Well, I've already told you that one anyway. Oh, you, yeah, you did. <laughs> Hannah, you had, like, no reaction. Like, your face stayed, like, the exact same. That's because she's barely awake. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm thinking about the flows. This pillow basalts? <laughs> yes. Flows. Every time I just watch the flows and I jot them down. And that helps me. It's just really, it's just the food right now, honestly. I think I should have eaten probably more oh. ice cream or something. <laughs> more ice cream. <laughs> that wouldn't have kept you awake now. I mean, you can go down and grab a piece of bread if you need to. When I went to the bathroom, all the bread was gone. Oh. Oh, wow. the breakfast just came Sebastian. out. <laughs> I only have one piece of bread, and that's because I was running up here. <laughs> there was plenty of bread when okay, I Okay, all of a sudden, I just got a little bit of a wave of energy. I just felt, I, I'm going to make it. Okay. Do you want a piece I'm glad of to hear that. ginger candy? No. Okay. That ginger candy is something I... I'll eat when I'm not hungry, okay? <laughs> because I like the flavor of it, like in my, like the aftertaste of like eating it. It just feels so fresh for some reason. And but, I don't like to taint it with other food. But you don't want it on an empty stomach. Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Is that a like know. a sponge? Dead it looks sponge? like a or coral top stalk. Top old sponge stalk. Of a big wide fan, maybe. Go for zoom. Go in. Hmm. Looks more solid for a sponge. Looks like bone. It might be bone. That is definitely not pumice. Can you zoom out a little bit? I don't, yeah. I don't think it's um, 
Mm, a bone? I don't think it's shaped right to be a bone of anything. Looks like the doesn't look like the base of a of a yeah. coral. Isn't there another one next to it on the left? Yep. You said definitely not pumice. Is that what you yeah. said, Hannah? Yes. Can we see the uh, the end of it near us? Can we tilt down? Sure thing, please. That left one looks more like sponge to me. Yes. So maybe maybe it's just a big fan sponge up toppled over. Coming out. Case closed. got someone wondering how much longer we're going to be diving today. And this is a 24-hour dive, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Started. so uh, it should be uh, like 12, hour, 12 hours from now will be is the planned uh, time for recovery. Mm -hmm. We've also got some suggestions to stand up and stretch and do some squats. And they said minus the lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about just walking outside and then walking back in, but now that I have somehow this newfound energy, <laughs> you um, could walk right here either. just like back and forth. No, I'm I'm okay now. <laughs> For some reason, the seven to seven thirty, I was like not here, You're but I'm here catatonic. now. Catatonic. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa. Some low bait. Okay. Yeah, she's back. Low baits and a oh, bamboo coral. All right, I'm hopping off. Here comes Daniel. All right. Have All right, fun. have fun. Mm. Bacon? Ooh. We have That's bacon every bacon day, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See ya. Adios. See ya. Yeah, Val will definitely be getting to rock a clock at wave point five. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm totally chill with. <laughs> totally chill with. You got we two got two rocks. rocks. We got two rocks. Okay, that's a win. <laughs> and they look great. They're perfect to me. Daniel Kinzer here filling in for Tori uh, for just a few minutes and uh, putting in my vote for mushrooms hey. and uh, and my favorite fruit, bacon. Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here on the four to eight watch. Thank you guys for having me. Glad to have, have a you mushroom here. ally. That's right, mushroom allies. When I make bacon at home, I. Uh, I'll, I'll cook it for about halfway in the oven, and then I'll glaze it with a mixture of uh, bourbon, honey, and chipotle oh, powder. Don't do which it. Is amazing. Come on. Yeah, the, definitely the bacon because, downstairs was not. Because bacon uh, doesn't have enough flavor on it. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. At least you cook it fully. Oh. It's impressive. Mike. We we've been doing the air fryer thing. But it's enough to we talk. Daniel, we were talking earlier. I just like the oven. 
about how some of our shipmates have uh, been fortunate enough uh, to make the journey into the monument on traditional vessel. That's right. Thing. And also had the experience of coming up to this extreme this? edge of the monument and diving with all of this modern technology. Yeah. And yeah. kind of curious oh. if, I don't know if that's something that, you know. There's another one right there. Oh, okay. How you relate to or think of the monument is influenced by those two very, very different experiences. Yeah, wow. Um, might need more coffee for this one. Yeah, but, yeah. But, I, but I think, you know, I think one of the things is that that we've been talking about um, just amongst friends here on board is is kind of the the realm-like nature of this very sacred place and and whether you're accessing the deep using modern technologies here in the furthest edge or or you're entering um, at Nihoa and Mokumanamana um, incredibly powerful islands down at the at the other end of the monument but on ancestral you know you're, you're being transported in space-time you know you're entering into uh, almost another dimension um, and it feels that way ecologically geologically spiritually in a very holistic way and so for me that for me those experiences are are very complementary of one another they they deliver the same or at least maybe not the same, but a very similar impact on the one who's having that experience. Um, it certainly has on me um, enter into a space. I don't. Is it ever, anyone else having like really powerful, provocative dreams? Me. Mm. Yep. A lot of people having I am. no having <laughs> no. <laughs> it, not everyone, um, but but I know I've uh, I've gotten hints. I've heard little whispers of that happening, and for me, it's definitely huh. been true. That's cool. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, I, I'll need more time and more coffee to fully process that question, Ed. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I really appreciate that input. Yeah. At the opposite end of the spectrum on dreams, <laughs> yesterday I was trying to take a nap. And uh, I ended up having a dream that I was at work and I was listening to two different conference calls on my phone at the same time and I couldn't understand what either one of them mm -hmm. was saying. <laughs> well, that's a true nightmare. <laughs> well, I was like, this, this is worse than not taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been better to just stay awake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When we were over the um, Akagi and the Kaga, I was like having nightmares. Oh, me too. Yeah. You know, it was just the energy that's mm. kind of emanating up from Charged all up. of that tragi tragedy. And uh, yeah, I know Hannah said she was having nightmares. I, I heard you. other people. Yes. Yeah. We're having, having nightmares, nightmares as well. Really? Huh. Yes. So very interesting. Once we left that area, I've been having dreams, but not nightmares. Is our, uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. The mana is real, you know, and we, oh. we carry the energies around oh. us. Oh. 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 of the watch. So Beautiful for life. <laughs> the Chana Cups love oh. you guys. Oh. Oh. This one doesn't. The chase is on. <laughs> Jake doesn't let anything get away. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's way up in your yeah. lights now. Went up. Wow, went straight up. Jake, you've been outsmarted by a Chana Cops, uh, my friend. Yeah, you're not <laughs> still in the lights. Oh, oh. oh. oh what a beautiful it's creature. Cute. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that is a lore-like thing on the front, hey? Eh? Yeah. Angle yeah, there fish? it goes. You can see it move. <laughs> just oh. so cute. <laughs> it's nice to see them moving. Usually uh. they're just, you know, kind of squatting on the seafloor. Coming in to get his get his punches in. So come here. Yeah. All right, you want to? Yeah. Wanna, See, you, I was you, like, oh, he's gonna give us a kiss. <laughs> no, he's back there chewing away at the hydraulic lines. <laughs> <laughs> Check Deidre's <ages> quick. <laughs> he knows how to hit us where it hurts. Yeah. That's good. Smart Chana cops. <laughs> Was that the fourth one? Third. Third? That's amazing. That's another for our ship, but apparently yeah. the previous ship saw the Chana Cops as well. So well, they only saw one. Today. Yeah, we've just been so, you know, back to the back to the topic of dreams and, and not totally unrelated to, to what we're seeing in the ocean is kind of uh, almost a dreamlike state when we're down here and in the control van, you enter into this dark space loaded with all of these screens and it's almost when you walk through that door, when I walk through that door, 
It's uh, entering into this other realm. All, all kinds of unbelievable creatures and landscapes. These ancient volcanoes and organisms that you don't see anywhere else. Almost yeah. nothing like them. It's pretty spectacular. And what? the ocean's put on a show for us all. And it's it looks like we're going to be coming. Enough. We're going to be coming in uh, to a different sort of terrain probably after waypoint five. We've been kind of going up this gentle slope, and that looks like we're starting to get towards the a series of like low peaks. So uh, we'll see um, if the landscape or the biology, the changes, biology at all. changes yeah. Yeah, right. this is almost reminds will. almost reminds me of. Uh, you know, when we when we uh, we drive up Saddle Road or up Mauna Kea and we see all of those vents, all those small little pu'u on the side, and looking at the topographical map of of this uh, Mauna Kea, of this seamount, it has um, it has some kind of it, it's a familiar characteristics. Anyways, it's uh, I thought the other ridge lines that we've dove on looked a little bit more like Oahu's landscape to me. There's really sharp ridge lines yeah. with steep cliffs. Yeah, we've been on a series of, so there was the Gio, which we were on mm -hmm. the flat seamo, uh, the first dive or two. And then we were on a ridge last dive, and then this is more of a, like a, it's a peak, but it's more of like a shallow peak. Yeah, yeah. We, um, when we were visiting Maui in 2004, um, we, d we went, did the road to Hana. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, my dad, loved driving it but we were all just like oh my god it's so beautiful it is it's a it's a, a ma like right along the ridge line there it's really cool and the communities there are just some of the most uh, amazing families and people uh, over in east maui and and um, yeah with big love aloha nui to our maui ohana all yeah. sides taking care of that island as yeah. lahaina heels and uh, that road to hana that's a healing, healing pathway there. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to me because that even the Gio formation kind of reminds me of Kauai. You sure. know, where you have the wetland up on top, and you know, kind of this uh, tall volcano, ancient volcano there on Kauai, somewhat like a Gio, and Oahu is more ridge-like, and and Molokai. Then you get over to Haleakala and the volcanoes of Mokokeave, the big island, and they look a little bit more like like this Mauna Kea, this seamount we're diving on today. That should get a beautiful Hawaiian name along with the last two we've dove on, hopefully pretty soon. These are currently unnamed, unnamed seamounts, but and unexplored. Hopefully uh, some children back home, Malia, yeah, they can watch these videos and uh, help uh, contribute to naming these these beautiful places yeah that's such a that's such an incredible process and i think that's been one of the unique features about Papahanaumokuakea is you know that naming process the nomenclature you know hui that just takes so much time and and puts so much effort and ike or knowledge into that process yeah so I know like even for the keiki, when they're naming, they often will have them name like the ilio holoika uawa or um, Hawaiian monk seals. Yeah. So that's really cool to get the kids involved and create names for them. Yeah. And always fun because then you get that level of connection, yep. you know, to these beautiful endemic and very rare yeah, they become um, families. Animals, yeah. yeah. I love the dog that rolls in the waves, right? Yeah. That, that's yep. the, that's the sort of translation. Ika uawa. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's a beautiful Hawaiian name. monk seal. Beautiful creature, and so many of them call these uh, Kapuna Islands their home. Absolutely. So, yeah. so only about 1,500 left in the world. Yeah. So one of the rarest, um, you know, uh, organisms that make their home in Papahanaumokuakea. So that's why another element of why it's so important to protect these places, because of all of these endemic, very rare, threatened animals that rely on this place for their, you know, their survival. From the deep sea to the atolls, this, mm -hmm. uh, this ecosystem uh, is made for abundance um, and for incredible diversity and, and unique uh, biological richness. Um, and it's... Uh, it's, a, it's so important that we see that interconnection and take care of take care of the space of these creatures. 
So my time is coming to an end here. Mahina's taking over for me. So aloha to you all. Ahui ho. Aloha. Mahalo. 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 Thank you. Fun to uh, step into the four to eights for a little bit, and we don't. Uh, all we, well, other than the shipwreck dives and getting to have uh, Mike with everyone all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now you're joining our watch. Yeah, joining your watch, and and uh, we feel really privileged to get to work with you guys. This is fun. It's a good crew here. Let's see. Yeah, we got a good watch. Who we got in here. Oh man, Tito's up there. <laughs> you got, you got every. Sebastian logging all the data. As anyone following 48 Watch knows, it blows my mind with uh, the encyclopedia in his brain. All these creatures, it's pretty amazing. Hannah doing the same thing with rocks. Mm -hmm. Just as just as incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Mike guiding us through all of our explorations, but, but especially those um, really significant. If you haven't, if uh, you guys have probably already uh, hyped this up a little bit, I hope you have the incredible videos that are coming out on YouTube, highlighting some of the work that um, that Mike and others helped to uh, shore, helped to lead, and Hans uh, von Tilburg helped to lead as we we dove on the three aircraft carriers, sunken aircraft carriers from Battle of Midway, and what an experience that was for all of us. And, Yes. Yeah, the uh, the OET editors really did a good job combining the highlights of those videos into one. It's like a, I think like 12 minutes long, something like that. Yeah. It's really Ten good. Ten and a half, I think. Ten and a half. It's a really yeah. good summary of everything. Get, it, it shows all the main features that She's we documented. Is this so a pick and go no, ahead? Can we get a uh, zoom? Zoom, zoom. Nope. Nope. But I'm not going to say it. It's a pick and go ahead. Yep. Oh, is it? It's a what? sea spider. Yep. <gasps> That's cool. <laughs> a daddy long legs. Right. Wow. Down. Sorry. Well, that's a beautiful one. There we go. Uh oh, -uh, that is scary Don't looking. <laughs> yeah, I got my. That is. Focus. It actually is kind of like out of nightmares. Yeah. You usually see them in the water column. As uh, that's so my focus. As science communication fellows were sometimes uh, invited to create galleries for Nautilus Live on the website, and I've been thinking of doing one on no the uh, on no the monsters of the deep sea, also yeah. cri also crime scenes of the deep sea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking for disappearance. And we had a, a beautiful sea star that was abducted. Still, <laughs> she's still trying to uh, solve, trying to solve that mystery. But. Um, so yeah, if there's any ideas you guys have seen on watch, stuff that should go into either of those galleries, send them my way. Really cool. That was beautiful, good spot. All right, Sebastian, what have we seen this watch? What have we seen? Yep. Uh, we've seen three Charlie Cops, two ET sponges, Pycnogonid, and missing any major cool stuff? Yeah, rocks. We saw those cup corals. We did see some cool, like, bouldery, cliffy formation. Oh, yeah, we yeah. did early on in the dive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rocks. I like that. That's good. <laughs> we can, it's amazing how we can, in so many ways, not just with rocks, just forget our foundation sometimes. Pohaku. Yeah, Pohaku. Where are we where are we literally come from? The foundation of all life. We're gonna end right at wave point five. <laughs> Rocket <laughs> clock for Val. Well yeah, done. Exactly. I'm so happy for her. <laughs> you sound it. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you got your two rocks. I did. More than usual. Yeah. And we got some bio on one of them, which is also a bonus. But really, you wanted the bio before you wanted the rock, so the yeah, rock is the bonus. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Yeah. We can treat them as equally loved children. Mm-hmm. 
That is funny, because the rocks are my children and biology is your children. Sea cucumber. Oh yeah. I don't know why it's taking me longer to notice sea cucumbers now. <laughs> so you better getting a little more translucent. Yeah. They don't look like rocks. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, if you want Hannah's attention, you gotta look like a rock. Yeah. Make a watch change here at video. Good luck, guys. Thanks, Ed. Cheers, out. See you at breakfast. Plot change is beginning. Yeah. 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 Hey, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm pretty hey, excited. Jake. Eight to twelves. I lied. Can you have just the team come back. steady so I can show Amber something about the zoom? Come steady. Yeah. Can Morning. I just zoom on something while you're? Yeah. I'll just sit down in this cucumber. Okay. <laughs> All right. Great. I smell the lavender. Huh? The lavender uh, lotion. <laughs> oh my. Hey, aloha, we got Zach in the house, Catalina in the house. Oh, Kukui, Val, Victoria, Virginia. We're, uh, we're almost complete, we're just missing Aquaman. Must be looking for cookies. Thank you everyone for joining in as we move to the eight to 12 watch coming in the, coming in, settling in. <laughs> it's uh, all right. We'll be back, but we have folks joining us from five of seven continents this morning. Got people from, of course, all over North America, all over Europe. We also have viewers in Brazil, and some viewers in in the Near East and Middle East, viewers in Australia and Japan. So, if you have friends in Antarctica or on the African continent, have them tune in. Let them know. Let's see if we can hit seven continents on the eight to twelve watch here on this unnamed seamount. Hopefully, soon to be given a beautiful name. Eighth dive of the Ala Amwana Kauli Path of the Deep Sea Traveler Expedition. Aloha, Ed. Aloha, Derek. Saying, saying mahalo and, and farewell to hopefully they'll get some breakfast and some rest, rest that four to eight watch. Got this the A team in the house. Eight, yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, <laughs> we just had to scoot them out the door and then bring the real pros <laughs> in here next to. Amazing watch lead again, Dr. Val Finlayson, and uh, we're morning. ready to rock, yeah? We're ready to rock. Mm. We even have Aquaman just arrived, Robert Aquaman <laughs> Waters. <laughs> I love that. To uh, guide us through these depths that he's traveled through many, many times in multiple vehicles, sometimes driving Alvin, which means he was there himself. I think Robert told told us earlier in this expedition that he's been down to 6,100 meters deep personally, mm -hmm. deeper than we'll ever go um, with the equipment we have on board. So what an incredible career mm -hmm. and life he's had exploring the deep sea. It's fun to have him on watch, even if uh, he gets a little grumpy before he gets his cookies. And he's not even on SPL yet, <laughs> he so he doesn't right know now. all the lovely things you're saying about him. <laughs> Well, he did tell us Atalantis has a ice cream freezer, so. That's right. That's <laughs> you know, well, that's a great career, yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. Career. Having that. He knows I'm a big fan anyway, so uh, yeah. he doesn't have to hear all my compliments and silly, <laughs> silly <laughs> talk. Let's get that man a cookie. All right, we're excited. Where are we? We're uh, almost, almost to waypoint five already. Almost waypoint five. Gonna make yeah. a lot of progress. 
excited to see what we got. Still a little sleepy. But yeah, absolutely. Here for watch and ready for it. Last watch had some beautiful, I was up early doing some mm -hmm. ship to shores with Mahina and, and others. And thank you to the team mm -hmm. helping out with those and uh, leading those so beautifully with so many great learners around the world. Uh, but they got to witness quite a few Chana Cops. Yeah. Beautiful mm. ones, yeah. So who knows? Chana Cops are pretty cool. We'll see what's around. Yeah, even the high school group thought they were cool. So <laughs> even the high schoolers thought that. they were cool. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to impress those high schoolers. <laughs> sure it can is. be. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember <laughs> being one a long, long time ago. No Dumbos? Uh, none reported. They might have been keeping them a secret from us, but uh, none reported. We did see a beautiful, beautiful sea spider right at the end, right mm -hmm. before. Oh, yeah, we saw that during breakfast. breakfast. Yeah, yeah, during breakfast. It was pretty cool. Uh, All right. So I was told my first task is to collect a rock here. Get some rocks. And it looks like these are collectible, unlike uh, some of the ones that we left uh, last time we were on watch. I do love the four-hour watch um, system. And oh, sorry. I just, oh, I just realized um, Robert's yeah. not on SPL, so did, did you want to get a rock right here? Um, I was told that was what they were setting up to do, so okay. yeah, we might as okay. well. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Cool. Sorry. Hey, Rob, I want to come out because I'm not the head for this rock right here. The what? I'm not the head for this rock right here. I'm coming up. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> The rock what? Um, I was I was told I uh, that it's rock o'clock. <laughs> Zach, do you think you're gonna be okay there with that with the boulder there? What's it can okay. with the boulder? Okay. Yeah, we'll let the pilots get situated. Do you not feel comfortable on the boulder? <laughs> so are they tracking? Oh shoot, we are tracking like All right, well I have to keep moving anyway. There's okay. Already, there was already a move on. Next yeah, stop. All good. Next stop. Yeah, I kind of wish they had stopped the boat when we did a watch changeover. I didn't realize they left it going. Oh, okay. Um, eh, sorry no about worries. that, guys. We no will find another spot. Now. Looks like there's lots of rocks. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I got them to hold here, so if we like find a good place in here, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a shortage of uh, <laughs> rocks that would work as wonderful samples here, so <laughs> I'm not too shook up. Catalina, we know it's the four to eight's fault anyway. So <laughs> don't worry about it. I think they're all hungry. <laughs> <laughs> they were hungry. They, they were talking a lot about breakfast. We would never do that at the end of our watch leading into lunch. No. <laughs> never happens. <laughs> Always focused. We never talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> Have any of you tried that uh, uh, coffee machine in the fore part of the ship? Oh, not yet. I keep thinking I've I need to. I've seen it, but I didn't know if we were allowed to. Oh. You're allowed to. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty uh -huh. good. It, yeah. It is. I don't think I'm allowed in, but I think you all are allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I guarantee you wouldn't make as much noise as a couple of the crew did uh, a couple of mornings ago. I'm not sure what was going on in there, but uh, it kind of sounded like something was being dropped. Oh, dear. I was very confused, but I was also a little seasick, so I stayed put. Oh, hey, another pumice. Oh, they're traveling friends. A volcanic rock from and far away. Yeah. Settling down. <coughs> yeah. There's been quite a few of those as I was, I came in a little bit early just to relieve Tori because she's doing, she's uh, hosting an awesome ship to shore right now, the school in Florida. Um, so seeing a lot of those Walteria sponges. And these are bamboo corals, these kind of whips, those single stock ones, is that true? Um, yes, so we've got Walteria sponges mixed in with some bamboo, um, unbranched bamboos. I'm getting better, learning all the things. You're doing amazing. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. I appreciate you yeah. all for And we've got a couple interspersed um, chrysoporgias as well. It looks like a metallic orgia on screen at oh. the moment. You know, I almost needed a little bit of a rest so to catch our breath from all of the incredible biodiversity and abundance of life we've been encountering. Although as mm -hmm. we get shallower, we might in fact have some similar experiences, but I'd, I'm uh, almost thankful for the time to, to cruise amongst the rocks. Mm -hmm. Not uh, be so overwhelmed. Really, it was, it's an emotional experience seeing all of yeah. these incredible deep sea habitats and formations. So mm -hmm. it's a lot e every day. <coughs> okay, I'd say we're good for rock land. All right. Yeah, it looks like the oxygen saturation has been going down. Interesting. Hey, you. You have any rock in mind? Um. Uh, this looks like we're coming up on a really good area right here. Um, yep. Yeah, this field looks pretty good. one uh, some stuff where I can't draw at the bottom of the screen because we got the menu in the way mm. oh nope uh oh what did I do <laughs> there we go get the uh, telestrators up all right is it working for you though what was that, Amber? Did you get the telestrator working? Uh, oh, yeah, it's working. I just, okay. uh, the, the selection menu is now on the bottom instead of the side of the screen. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no worries. Let's see. Yeah, that one or that one. Those all look awesome. Zoom in a little bit, Robert. It looks kind of crusty. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? It looks flatter than... You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks flatter than I first thought. <laughs> Robert knows what we like. <laughs> he does, he does. Yeah, that's Robert. All right. Wait for the dust to clear a little bit. You want to jump forward a little bit? Or do you think there's still something in here? <clears throat> um, I think, I think there's still some others here. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> oh, whoa. I don't know if that'll fit in the boxes. <laughs> also kind of... Oh, that's Oop. too big. 
Maybe, maybe to the side of that. That one looked all right. Maybe that one. Oh yeah, there we go. That looks good. Hey. Okay. Yeah, that looks great. Won't even have to hammer it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that, we, not uh, that anyone would ever do that. We we had to pry that one out. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> it was entertaining. <laughs> Where's this going? Uh, you have box B as in boy and D as in dog open. You also have F, but... We could maybe jam it in the F. <laughs> Alright. Awesome. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Uh, what what sample number was that one? Uh, zero seven four. Zero seven four. Thank you. Nice work, team. First sample for this round of the eight to twelve watch. If you want to see who's on watch, you can go to Nautilus Live and uh, on the main page down below camera number one. You can see all of us. Yeah. I guess I can't hear you. You're too soft. It was too close. So Val, um, the previous watch had been tracking a line kind of going up a ridge. Would you like to do that? Would you rather do some hops? Um, how about we do some hops? Uh, it looks like we're about to see a little bit of a change in slope. So okay. maybe maybe we'll see something different, but it looks like we're also getting into an oxygen minimum. Okay. So maybe not. Okay. Well, we can start with just some hops in case we do see anything. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, maybe, maybe we want a lateral, oops, sorry. Sorry, Val, what was that? Oh, I, I was thinking maybe we could lateral over to that little uh, local high that's kind of sticking out just uh, kind of west-northwest, maybe like Oh, yeah, 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 or so, and then, yes. and then maybe go up that ridge? Yep, for sure. Actually, that was kind of the idea we had, too. Ah, oh, perfect. Great minds think alike, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Your two minds are both amazing, as are all the minds in the control van, <laughs> and some of the minds listening in from home. <laughs> Just kidding, everyone. We love you all.
no shortage of rocks here. Wow. Yeah. What a field. Val, you were mentioning where you mentioned an oxygen minimum <coughs> and, uh, in this zone. We're noticing uh, lower concentrations than what we would expect, or it's just kind of a natural. This happens in, in uh, parts of the ocean. Uh, this this can kind of happen uh, naturally in different uh, portions of the water column. Um, we we saw this uh, on the last dive too, um, and. Presumably on previous dives, I just wasn't paying as much attention. Uh, but yeah, we started off uh, this dive somewhere around 33 to 35%-ish uh, uh, oxygen saturation. Um, looks like as of about an hour ago, uh, it was at 16%. And in the last uh, uh, 15 minutes, it started dropping down to about 12%. Oh, wow. And uh, we, we hit... During during uh, the last dive, we we hit a, a zone in the water column that was around 11% oxygen saturation, and mm -hmm. it seems like that corresponded, you know, correlated perhaps uh, causation. I, I can't really speak to, but correlation, sure. Uh, there's a major drop off in the uh, density of uh, life that we we're seeing. Well, yeah, certainly um, access to oxygen is going to be a limiting factor on on mm -hmm. size and growth of our biological communities. I'm sure mm -hmm. Virginia can explain more about yeah. that. <clears throat> oxygen is one of the many factors that we look into when um, we're trying to um, un better understand why we're seeing different taxa, different corals, different sponges, different organisms in different locations, especially on a seamount like this. Um, you know, this chrysogorgia in front of us, this is um, a metallogorgia. Um, and why, why is it surviving here? Um, but we didn't see very many of it somewhere else, right? And mm -hmm. so one of those many reasons could be, could be oxygen, could be current, could be sediment, could you know, um, could be a combination of oxygen and temperature. And uh, <coughs> so, um, you know, as you move up into the water column, your your um, wow, metallic gorges are just so beautiful. Um, <laughs> and I and I love the ophiroid that. Um, that individual op ophiroid that will live with that individual coral for, you know, both of their lives. Is this um, a pretty mature metallogorgia? Uh, I I I believe so. Um, I'm actually not certain how wide their. Um, uh, Sebastian actually called it a canopy, and I think that's such a good term for it. How oh, wide their I canopy like can can um, <coughs> can get, uh, but uh, it does look like all of the. Um, it's a pretty well formed, so yeah, it's it's definitely yeah. thriving here. Mm -hmm. So it, to kind of draw an analogy to help me understand Virginia and, and, mm -hmm. and Val, anyone who has mano'o on this is, you know, similar that you find some organisms at high elevations above sea level because they have certain, you know, they've, they've adapted to oxygen quantities and, and uh, concentrations. So perhaps those metallogorgia could be better suited than other organisms, um, other other Chrysogorgias, other coral and sponge species, they could be particularly well adapted to lower oxygen levels, and and that as a as a possibility, that's kind of yeah, what as we a, might expect as a to possibility. Find. Um, I'm not positive here that it is low oxygen that would be causing any sort of low abundance that we're seeing. Um, uh, we have to look into it further to see if there are any other correlated um, environmental changes. But the general thought process is, yes, uh, similar to walking up a mountain and seeing, going from like, you know, forest and prairie to small shrubs and, and you know, I think the more specialized taxa, you could see something very similar um, due to, I mean, due to the temperature and um, uh, I think I think actually on mountains it's uh, temperature as well as like um, so, uh, soil type and rain are some of the other key factors there. And so I think here we could also say that it's you know soil type, it's sediment, and it could also be oxygen as well. So yeah, cool. yeah. Mahalo for that. You know, yeah. so yeah, it's it is very similar. That's a really good analogy. Wow. We have. Um, 
An interesting question from a viewer calling in from Jupiter, Florida. Shout outs to Florida. Oh, nice. And uh, thanks for tuning in and, and uh, sharing your questions and thoughts with us, asking where does this dissolved oxygen come from in the deep sea? What's the uh, source of oxygen? Any <coughs> Manao, any thoughts or Ike on that? Oh, look well, at that anemone. Yeah, that's a nice looking anemone and some crest gorges in the background, or um, metallic gorges in the background. Um, so a lot of the oxygen does actually come from the surface. Um, and so a lot of the oxygen actually gets moved around, um, which which actually is why in the deep ocean you're able to get some lower lower oxygen zones because um, some of this water is actually very old. The um, bacteria has been using a lot of the. Um, oh, we do. We've got something. What is that? that a, I think that's a crinoid. I'm having a hard time getting a good eye on it. Um, I think that's a crinoid. Can we get a zoom on that? Yeah. yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Maybe some sort of uh, cup coral or something on the other side of the rock. It looks like a. It's hard to. It's hard to tell. Oh, that's some sort of. It. Wait, that's only got five legs on it. Five arms. Sorry. Oh. Can we zoom in. Not certain the required number of arms on a crinoid, but yeah, I don't know <laughs> either. I think because a crinoid is also an echinoderm, and so yeah. echinoderms have like oh, yeah. a metamorphous radial symmetry. It is. Um, it is a yes. You are absolutely correct, Kukui. Yeah, bear um, with us while the caffeine kicks in. <laughs> the other thing that I'm noticing here is that it does seem to have sort of legs that are holding on to yeah the rock underneath it, and that. That is a crinoid. Whoa. Okay. I guess I'm used to seeing them with more legs. Arms. All right. Wh which one's more appropriate, legs or arms? Um. What? Leg? Did you say appendages? Oh, arms. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Arms. arms. And it, and it actually is five arms. Um, but some some taxa of crinoids can have more. Okay. Yeah. I guess we see those more frequently. So Kukui is completely correct. Oh. Yeah. Yay. Nice to done. Probably yeah. the most awake of us. <laughs> <laughs> Generally speaking, yeah. Kukui is very awake. That's yeah, nice Kukui, zoom. our light, our well of knowledge, awakened one, <laughs> enlightened one. No, I learned from all oh. of you folks. Yeah. I did just look it up, though. Um, uh, several species of crinoids divide their arms one or more times. Oh, gosh. And oh so they will God. have... I want to do that. Metal. <laughs> as many as many arms as 180. That's too many 108? arms. 108? Yes. What are they going to do with 108 arms? Oh, come on, Kukui. Imagine all the fun you could have with 108 right. arms. That just oh sounds dear. like chaos. 180. Yeah. 180? 180. I'd get yes. all the things done. I'd get all no, the things done. No, that's just chaos. <laughs> that's how we like it. I agree with Dr. Val. I don't know. <laughs> I can barely manage two arms right now. Yeah, right? <laughs> Sad thing is Kukui gets more done with two arms than I would with 180. <laughs> <laughs> that is an absolute lie. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that either. Oh, you know it's true. Come on. No. I, I see you working hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Walter, you're a with some beautiful crinoids. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, see, that's that's the crinoid form I'm much more used to seeing. Yeah. But then again, I, I tend to... I tend to do most of my work in the Pacific, so I'm kind of in this area mostly. You know, this yeah, this is your zone. Basin. These are your ancient volcanoes. This is oh, they're, your, they're your not good mine. friends. They, well, I mean, they come don't on. belong to me. <laughs> they, you would never claim ownership over them, but they're they're your good friend. They're like they're like your friends. I, I have a connection with them. Yeah, yeah. you have your pumina <laughs> with them. Yeah. Yeah. And and the Hawaiian way of thinking, it you know, which doesn't. It doesn't really come from a place of ownership. It just comes from a place of uh, giving our attention to to yeah. um, to Service. malama, you Service. know. Yeah, yeah, giving our mm -hmm. you know kokua and just that pilina, that relationship with is uh, yeah. it, that 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 becomes ours because it's our privilege and responsibility, our kuleana to connect and relate to it. So these, in that way, in that way of thinking, these are certainly your. Volcanoes, Doctor Wow. In that in that sense of the word, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I could never claim ownership. No, no planting of flags or yeah. something. Yeah, no, never. Yeah. Not my place. 
No, I'm I'm here to try to learn and understand, just like just like all of us. There you go. That's a wise way of being when we enter this library. This uh, Mahina has been teaching us uh, the last couple of weeks to mm -hmm. to think of this kai uli, this layers of knowledge, is uh, where we can access things that may, might not be accessible when we're up at the surface or living in Ao. So we can uh, gain even deeper knowledge than we're than we're uh, used to getting on our day in our day to day lives back home. Just being revealed uh, so much too, so I think that opportunity that uh, presents an opportunity to learn, uh, which is amazing. Yeah, it's one of the best parts about being able to go to sea. Mm. Yeah, Ooh, looks like from Atlanta Cam, we've got something coming up here pretty soon. Mm. Something okay, little... sponge. Maybe, yeah. I think that's a sea cucumber that we're seeing currently. Is it? It's very. Where are you looking? It could be. Oh. It, it's oh, just it out just of passed, the. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's similar to the one in the upper left hand corner, which I'm thinking might be a glass sponge face. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see it now. It's upright. I had, I had the angle wrong on it. Oh, yeah. That is. <laughs> now we're going to have the, uh, is it sponge or is it a uh, holothurian <laughs> conversation? <laughs> well, that's a sponge at least. Yeah, so. it's definitely a sponge. <laughs> one of our viewers uh, pointing out, one of our of our frequent viewers and commenters pointing, uh, sharing that uh, oh, no. fossil uh -oh. crinoids, the biggest fossil cr crinoids, uh, massive, oh. massive crinoids with a huge number of arms, essentially, Oop, according according on. to here, basically ruled the earth and the ocean. I gotta look that up. Sounds like a crazy time. Okay. I think if I remember right from my paleontology class, don't crinoid fossils, I think, um, aren't they made up of like kind of fruit loop looking little bits from their stalk? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, like like the stems can kind of disaggregate oh and in the fossil goodness. record, yeah, you get those yeah. little rings. <laughs> that's and awesome. Yeah, I just they, looked it up. They do look a little bit like fruit loops. <laughs> good memory. Yeah, that's a good one. That, that is colorful. Please disregard. We are um, we're, we're trying to change something with the Telestrator, and uh, it's 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 harder than it should be. <laughs> we got a Telestrator party going on, and I'm learning I'm learning all about when crinoids oh, ruled job. the earth. Exciting wow. times. No, that, that was a mistake. Sorry, Robert. I think there was also a time when clams dominated the reef ecosystems as well. Ooh. Or some kind of. Mollusk. You know, for all the for all the fascination with dinosaurs, and they were certainly amazing. I think you know we should see more Hollywood films about clams, giant clams, about crinoids, ancient crinoids ruling the earth. I I'd, agree. I'd watch that. Come on, Steven Spielberg, if you're listening. I wonder about uh, that rock. We got a movie recently. pitch for you. And on this website, they call them appendages, crinoid appendages. Thanks, Amber. Mm -hmm. All 
little change in the geology here. We're kind of transitioning over to what seems to be the top of a uh, sheet flow, and I can actually see some uh, cooling joints that we're kind of looking down on top of. So we kind of see some uh, hexagonal patterns in the surface of the rock yeah. here and there. You're going to have to point those out to me so I can mm. see the rocks through your I'm eyes, Dr. Bell. afraid to touch Bell. the telestrator yeah, right don't, now. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it some time. No, it's, so it's okay. <laughs> No, uh, apparently the telestrator's having a little trouble waking up, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for some reason I couldn't really stay asleep last night. I'm not sure why. Just yeah. kept waking up over and over. It's the mana, the mana of Papa Hanamokuakea sometimes. That might be the way to explain it. I, I can't think of a better thing. <laughs> oh, I think I see a stock below Soma on the left-hand side. Oh. Ooh. And then I think a bathy pathy side is Yeah, I think that's the bathy pathies us. there. I would agree. Nice. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a quick look at that. All right, bathopathies. I'm going to have to make sure I can recognize these. Uh, Maybe a Chrysogorgia or a Metallogorgia right on the side there. You can see it in still cam. Yeah, I think there's a little Chrysogorgia. Oh, that's a very dramatic lighting there that you've got. That's awesome. Some batroidal uh, surface texture there on the rock. Yeah. Yeah, quite Is a bit of sediment too. Tiny, tiny squat lobster. Oh, 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 oh yeah. right there. Sure <laughs> <enough. It's so laughs> tiny. Nice spot. Yeah, that does look like a nice bath pathy specimen too. I'm over here looking at the rocks. And, oh, you uh, totally missed the, the squat lobster. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, also, right? great bathy pathies. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> right. Thanks for that. Is that a calabacus sponge or a bolosoma? Can't um, quite tell yet. I think it's cup shaped. It's a stock sponge, not, not certain. Um, I like to, yeah, um, when it comes to sponges, uh, I want to see where the stock is going into and what the, the um, um, pores sort of look like. Um, yeah. They did also collect what was called an ET sponge, so uh, I also want to make sure it's not yeah. one of those. Yeah, I, I saw that there were some messages in uh, science chat about that. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure what it was. I, yeah. I had to Google it myself, honestly. Yeah, I had quick, had it looks like the stock is going in the center of the... Uh, the base body of the sponge. Yeah. Looks like it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I am thinking it's in the euplectelid. Um, it's got that sort of chair look, like some of the, yeah, uh, some of the bolosomas. So. Some, some of those yeah. uh, retro chairs. Mm -hmm. It could be a bolosoma. Eat. Oh, it does stand for extraterrestrial. The ET sponge? Yeah. yeah. What? I think it, it's actually named after the movie. What? Speaking of Steven I think Spielberg. You're right. <laughs> and apparently one anonymous viewer says yes, Steven Spielberg listening. But he spelled uh -huh. Steven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think I've seen a couple of these before. Advena Very Magnifica. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that zoom. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this does def this does look like a Euplectelid sponge. Yeah. Latin for magnificent alien. Magnificent alien. They do kind of look like they're like looking at you like E. T. Yeah. sitting over here anthropomorphizing sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time it's been done. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be the last either. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just what our brains are just kind of trained to do. We're, uh, you know, they're, they're, we just instinctually seek out patterns, you know, recognizable uh, things, faces, where there isn't actually one. 
That's why uh, there's that famous picture, uh, uh, that famous picture from, uh, what is it? Oh gosh, come on brain, what do is work. This? Uh, I think it's uh, the moon, the face on the moon, is there, is it Mars? Oh, the face on Mars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's so many faces on yeah, it's, uh, everywhere you look. That geologic structure that had just enough like digital noise in it that it looks very face-like. You know, um, our, our brains really want to make that into something that it's not. Oh, I wonder if this is. Yeah, I don't know. What... Oh wow, I'm seeing some interesting photoshops of that. <laughs> So what's our purple friend here, down here? Oh yeah, we've got a sea cucumber there, but I was interested in this. Actually. Oh yeah, let's let's. <laughs> um, I mean, the sea cucumber is cute, I will say, but um, this is an interesting shape. Yeah. That we haven't we haven't seen on this dive, and it could be. The ophiroid is making me wonder if this isn't. Zoom in. Um, okay, metallic gorgia, but it could just be any other um, chrysogorgia with a weird shape that I'm not Yeah, it's it's very tall. With. Um, oh. A different kind of branching pattern than we usually see. It's got the fractal, so this is this is yeah. why I'm wondering. It's got the sort of fractal um, branching pattern, which is yeah. very, very um, common in chrysogorgia, but it's got um, branches that are coming out at angles. It looks um, like bigger polyps too. It, and so I'm wondering if it's not um, a metallic orgia, like a young metallic orgia that still yeah. has to. Um, the size of the polyps looks different than what we usually see with metallic orgia too. We might be zoomed in a little bit more. Um, yeah. yeah, it's Max in there. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much for that. Yeah. There are there are several different taxa of Chrysoporgia, mm -hmm. um, and and actually of the family Chrysoporgidae as well. There's um, it's fairly tax, large, isn't it? So. Sorry, it's fairly large, isn't it? The the family? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is it is a large family. So. And I think I'm seeing a small, very small. Either Paragorgia. Oh, are you talking about right, right here? Yeah. 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 Would we be able to zoom on that as well? That's a beautiful zoom on the um, the price of Portia, or the price we of Portia. We have to move closer because I was already at my max. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I just can't get very tight because I was already at my max. So tiny. Good spot for Queen. That's as big as it's going to get. <laughs> oh. It's so tiny. It's a cute little red coral. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> the little friend next to it. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. Yeah, so this is a picture of what the um, metallic orgia melanotrichos juveniles look like, is this sort of long pedalin. It's hard to see, mm. but they've got a similar branching style. Um, so that's what I'm judging it off of is the, the branching and gotcha. Okay. But I have been wrong before. All right, uh, we just did a pilot swap here. <coughs> Excuse me. Go get him, Zach. We're gonna get, uh, get moving again with uh, uh, Zach flying. Yes, pad one. <laughs> <laughs> Go, pad one. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> uh, 
there's that big old sponge. Ah, it's like a polyopagon. Mm, polyopagon, yeah. Polyopagon. They are wonderful. I was I was not very familiar with polyopagon. Oh, polyopagon another one too in the background before um, this cruise. Actually, before, um, the first time I really noticed them was in the the dive, the Nautilus cruise that happened prior to us getting on board. Yeah, they get pretty large in this area. Mm -hmm. I think uh, don't they get down into like the Johnston Atoll area? I believe so. I think so, yeah. I know very little about them except that they get grow to be a um, massive size. Yeah, we've, we've seen them like get as tall as a uh, herc in some instances. Oh, there's no range info there. Got several more unbranched bamboos here. Oh, I think I see radial cooling on one of the rocks. Maybe I'm see seeing that? a little bit of uh, some horizontal uh, banding too that could be related to um, some circulation structure within the rock. Looks kind of like a, a lava flow that kind of had some vesicles drawn out along the flow direction. You can kind of see it in cross section of that there. And on the top, you can see some little fractures that kind of form these like geometric, uh, sort of a geometric distribution. So those are some of the cooling fractures that I was talking about earlier. Excellent. So maybe some sort of a relatively thin sheet flow once came across this area and then cooled. Now it's making for some nice substrate. Mm -hmm. I could steal a quick minute. I, I got my dad to jump on real quick to to oh. record. I wanted to give a, a special shout out to my good friend Caroline. Just had her twins today. <gasps> oh, oh congratulations. my gosh! Congratulations! Yeah. Special shout out to Sylvie and Hank from here oh. in Papa Hanamo Kuakea and sending so much love to them and yeah, sharing this special moment with them. Oh, oh that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that happy news with us. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me have a little moment. Of course. <laughs> yeah. What a gift to share a new life, a special moment for yeah. for your friends, for that family. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh wow, polyopagons are like everywhere, almost. We have uh, reconfigured the telestrator in a way that makes the scientists happier because now we can access the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Thanks for that, Amber. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to draw random things to make sure this has worked, by yeah. the way, Robert. Yeah, so disregard. Just disregard. Yeah. I am. You might need to exit the menu. Oh, I have to exit. Thank you. Yes. Just hit the menu oh. button. Yeah, it oh, has changed. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, we're missing we're missing the draw. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. We got right, an this NFL is we got this an is NFL fine. mode. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yesterday yeah. was Sunday. Monday night football mode. There we go. All right, hold on. Let me come back there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe add to toolbar. 
Yeah, I think that's what you wanted. Yeah, so it was go here. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, then we can get in trouble if we had the wrong I, thing. Yeah, I did mess with it, but it, it, um, it didn't have the free hand on here. For those at home oh, listening in, and we have an amazing Telestrator capability, so our science team can uh, highlight parts of the screen for the ROV pilots, um, maybe targeting a sample or just pointing to something that we're observing. And uh, it's given us a little, it's being a little finicky for us, or we're being a little finicky with it. Mm -hmm. Hard Sometimes to say. it's a little too powerful, so we're not, we're not supposed to be messing with it back here. <laughs> It's the uh, it's the same technology that you'll see uh, sports oh, wow. broadcasters use. Look at these beautiful sponges. Yeah, Some it makes bamboo corals. It makes uh, trying to. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're we're just doing a little troubleshooting, trying to move uh, the control uh, menu bar from the bottom to the side. Uh, the side's a little bit more out of the way for us. Um, okay. Sometimes there's stuff we want to see at the bottom of the menu, but. Um, we, we've got it moved over, but our, our most important tool is uh, now not on there, so we're trying to figure out uh, why. So we know you can't see it at home, but just let us be confused for a few minutes and we'll uh, <laughs> find our way back. I think to the Telestrator needs some coffee, too. <laughs> <laughs> Digital coffee, not the real kind. That would make it worse. Yeah, don't spill your coffee. In yeah, the control I don't think bed. that would be appreciated. Uh, we have free hand at the bottom now. We have. Uh, All right, let's try that. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Hey, Yay. I think we're back. Hey. <laughs> All right. Disregard that. Sorry, pilots. Thank you for your patience. Now our deep sea broadcasters can uh, can do oh. their job, draw oh. out the uh -oh. plays. How do we erase? <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, st stand by. We're still having issues. I'll keep. Uh, oh, here's here's draw. We don't have a clear, do we? <laughs> oh, I found draw. It was up at the top. We just had to scroll. <laughs> They're scrolling. <laughs> oh no. Maybe uh, we're hopeless. Yeah, maybe maybe we maybe we take the Telestrator off SPL. Can we edit last? And uh, you know. Oh no. Give it a good kick. Edit. And uh, maybe that'll fix it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh no. Oh, we're having a lot of fun back here in the second row. While our ROV pilots wonder what the heck is going on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, just looking around. Just kind of just like that. Keep looking around. I'm enjoying the tour. <laughs> this is the eighth dive of the Ala Almoana Kaiuli expedition in Papahanao Mokuakea. And uh, we are just playing Telestrator games. It's kind of like reindeer <laughs> games. We're a bit like Rudolph. It's more like Telestrator fail. <laughs> it's one of these mornings where the tech just doesn't hit. Sometimes mass spectrometers do this too. Yeah, technology. Like they, they work fine, and then you get in the next day, and then they're not fine. Your friends, and this there's is no a, reason why. This is a good lesson that the internet needs to learn. Technology uh -huh. is going to fail us yes. at multiple right. points, uh -huh. and uh, we're going to have to get good at being human again, which uh, should be a lot of fun. Boom. Hey. Yay. Now I think we're really bad. The other lesson is always Ambers keep an amber around. Yes. 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 Uh, she's keeping she's yeah. keeping this watch running. Oh my yeah. goodness. It was on the brink of falling apart there for a second. <laughs> we're sorry, internet, but not sorry. Uh, we're having yeah. a great time on this incredible dive. And uh, take apart a mass spec, can't fix a telestrator. <laughs> it's like it's like trying to fix a printer. <laughs> mass spectrometers are easier to fix than printers. Somehow. I don't know how that works. Did they leave you the manual behind? 
the manuals for both are terrible. Ah. No. Yeah. Although you actually get better to find error codes with the mass specs. So you, you at least yeah. know what part of the instrument most of the time to look in. Although sometimes the errors can be deceptive and you have to know like when that happens. Mm. Yeah. Let's Easy. talk about manuals. Has, has anyone ever found a really beautiful, well put together manual? GMT, oh, generic <laughs> mapping tools. I yeah. think that manual's pretty Their good. That manual's good. Mm. I'm it's impressed. very technical, but it's very detailed. It's a hard thing to do to make a manual accessible, just the right level of detail. I'm also oh. working on a manual for tungsten isotopes. It's like 75 pages. Oh my Ooh. goodness. Ooh. Wow. I hope it's descriptive enough. <laughs> We'll see if it's good. That's 75 pages. I would hope it is descriptive. <laughs> hey, it's it's even got annotated pictures. That's wonderful. Ooh. That is wonderful. I, yeah. I just need to, like, uh, the only thing, like, I'm waiting to finish with that one is uh, <laughs> just the last bit of chemistry that I've been needing to test. And uh, I'm hoping uh, one of our other mass spectrometers is back up and running so I can do, like, the quality checks on uh, some of those, uh, some of that test chemistry I ran. So, like, we, I, I kind of want to switch from uh, a procedure we've been using for a while uh, to kind of finalize uh, mm -hmm. uh, those samples uh, to do something that I think will be much more efficient in, as far as time, reagents, and uh, just overall recovery of uh, tungsten off of it. I just don't okay. think we'll lose as much. But you don't know until you, until you actually test what you've done. Right. So. This is a beautiful bamboo in front of us. Um, That is. Yeah. That's very cool. It looks like more of what we saw last night, though. Yeah, because so. we saw some uh, internodal and nodal branching uh, yes, bamboos kind of yes, overlapping in the same area. Mm -hmm. it, yes, they, they tend to do that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, uh, we saw that on one of the other dives, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bamboos are a very diverse group. Um, and, um, yeah, I think, but they, I think they can also. They seem to have some overlapping habitats. Um, yeah. So I have a question that may not have a great answer to it. Um, what's what is the the fascination with bamboos? It seems like those are kind of a kind of a favorite. Ah, uh, well, you see, it's because they were clumped together. They were clumped together based on their morphology, the fact that they have white skeleton with um, black nodes, mm -hmm. making the sort of generalized bamboo. Um, grouping and they were thrown into a family, which is great, except that um, uh, they are what is known as uh, polyphyletic. Poly, poly, I think that's right. Um, and so there are actually multiple families within the single bamboo family. So there is a lot of changing and moving around this group because they've actually, um, they actually are, yeah, par Polyphy they have multiple, there's too much, there's too great a degree of difference within this one group to call them all the same thing. Okay. And so there's a lot of focus on bamboos right now um, because it looks like there are several families within one, um, multiple, they've been, and they've been called clades for a really long time and now I think actually um, I did see a, a, a recent paper that um, did give did give a more general <laughs> overview of, of how they're changing things. Um, but the other issue too is there's so much diversity in, in the shape of these, but the branching is especially important. Um, so you, you have a good idea of what is different species based on the branching. Um, but uh, you have to look into some of the other key characteristics and it can take a long time to look at the genetic diversity as well as the um, morphological Almost. diversity. Oh, another traveler. Yeah. Um, so I think there's some focus there because we've, we've thought, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Because you know, we thought we had it in a box and then we found mm -hmm. out that the box is actually way too small and we need to make more boxes for okay. it. Okay. Um, and so it's very it's interesting wild. in that way. Yeah. And then you also yeah. kind of have to wonder, well, how, how did these all evolve? Or did they, are they, are they sister groups? Are they not sister groups? And so there's a lot of questions on 
um, being asked around these bamboos as well, not okay. just their taxonomy. Gotcha. Yeah, I was I was trying to figure out. Um, yeah. Uh, you know what what that kind of story about the bamboos was. So thank you for sharing that. That's that's a uh, clarified a few things for me. Oh yeah, absolutely. And there's some. I think there's a couple groups of people who are working on bamboos, but, um, and some other things have been happening with the octocorals. I, I have, I will say, I, I think uh, after shifts, I maybe complain a little bit about the renaming of octocorals every <laughs> once in a while and how I feel like I'm always wrong because I can't remember what the new, I say new, I think it's been a couple of years since the oh, papers that's, came that's out, new. but you know, I, I, I have a hard time keeping up with it. and. Um, but in reality, what they're doing yeah. is they're just clarifying. They're adding up to our information, and they are um, mm -hmm. moving. They're moving taxa around. Um, in honestly, some of the to make it more to put to put organisms in an order that makes the most amount of sense for their genetics as well as their morphology. So, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, and sometimes changes are needed. Pretty incredible, actually, how resilient the taxonomical system has been as we've been able to sort of describe so many new species over the last 150, 200 years, oh, but, yeah. but uh, able to sort of largely, um, you know, just keep adding and adapting and modifying uh, this sort of evolutionary tree of life. Right, uh, right. Really, it's really, really interesting, nice. you know, because the earliest um, descriptions of most taxa are just morphology, right? Which is why you get all the bamboos in one, because they all have this very distinct morphology. Um, and so to come back and sort of reorder and, you know, really look under a microscope at not just, you know, the sclerites, but the naming conventions as well as those earlier descriptions, making sure that we're not, you know, creating a new genus when what an old one would suit with just slight modifications and such. It's a it's a huge task to go around and uh, characterize and recharacterize, you know, some of these taxa. Um, mm -hmm. So I can imagine. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty astonishing actually yeah. all and the work that goes into it. The pace of change in science can be slow too because it can be really hard to get everybody on board and like uh, ex accepting uh, some of these some of these shifts in how we're thinking or classifying things too. But, um, you know, and as with the case with the bamboos, it sounds like uh, every now and again that, that revision is needed in order to keep science moving forward and uh, to accommodate, uh, you know, uh, new data, new things that we're learning, uh, revised interpretations uh, uh, based on uh, uh, new information coming in. Absolutely. I mean, that's what science does. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, fascinating conversation. It makes me think of earlier conversations about paradigm shifts and the challenges when we encounter yeah. information that just does not align with our current understanding and have to completely update our priors, not just uh, at a surface level, but uh, a foundational level. Some of the most exciting moments in uh, the history of science and uh, of just of knowledge in general when completely new ways of understanding the world around us are happening and I, th I feel like we're in one of those times ecologically geologically and understanding our earth we're kind of uh, entering or maybe moving our way through it's might have been happening for a while now but moving our way slowly through a paradigm shift in understanding our planet yeah I mean we're in an era of change um, uh, the science is having to keep up with that so I think you're right yeah. Yeah. you can kind of feel it Oh, it looks like we moved into several polyopagons here. Yeah, it's been a little more sponge heavy around here. Polyopagons. Looks like a stack of uh, maybe some sheet flows that we're seeing in uh, cross section. I feel like okay. someone should make a song called <laughs> Polyopagons. <laughs> polyopagons. <laughs> maybe sheet flows, yeah. maybe something else. Can't quite tell <laughs> them like substrate yet. Song. What was that last bit? <laughs> and some what? Uh, not quite sure yet. Could we do like a quick flyby zoom on the rocks? Which one, Val? Well? I, I, he can know. 
Which one's Val? Hmm? Did you hear that? It, was it any rocks in particular? Or um, it, yeah. any of these? So, I think I think we just got into a hyaloclastite field. I just wanted to get a like a quick confirmation oh. on any of these hyaloclastite. Yeah. Would you be able to explain why you're, um, in, you know, the they significance look. of hyaloclastite yeah. and why I now know how to <laughs> pronounce that word? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. it's it's a mouthful. Um, yeah, the, uh, so yeah, the rocks kind of suddenly started looking, uh, yellower. Um, and I was noticing some thinner, uh, some thinner bedding planes, uh, uh in, in some of the, uh, in substrate. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're probably pretty close to a, uh, an old, uh, extinct volcanic vent that would have erupted these out, because these are uh, probably a, a near vent deposit. It's a, a Can I get lava. Amber? Amber? Lava that got uh, erupted into the water column and sort of broke apart and fragmented and uh, then settled back out and formed these uh, deposits. It's just this very, very highly altered rock because uh, uh, seawater hydrothermal circulation can get in and change it rapidly from its original probably basaltic composition. Yeah, that, that looks like hyaloclastite. Okay. And a little baby coral. Yeah, it does look like there's a little... A little red coral. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. There's a little red coral there, and there's a little red coral. Oh, there. right back there too. Oh, wonderful baby corals. All right. Thanks for the zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are in uh, hyaloclastite territory, and we're kind of uh, a little bit above waypoint five, up on this little kind of topographical uh, bathymetric feature that's that's kind of sticking out. So this this might be some old, um, you know, this this is, could be tentatively identified as a. Uh, some old little parasitic volcanic vent on the side of the seamount. Uh, that that can happen sometimes uh, parasitic during parasitic volcanic vent. Yeah, little little parasitic cones. Uh, they're they're not uh, they're they're part of the volcanic system, but they're uh, not like up at the main summit uh, uh, vent area, and you you kind of get them like growing around the uh, different different parts of the flanks of the volcano. Um, do they have the sort same of a later sort of stage? Do they connect to the ch the n the other chain? I'm um, it, it's it's like part of the okay. more outer plumbing system that okay. uh, feeds feeds rift zones and such. So, um, are I you familiar with what like Mauna Kea looks like? Oh, uh, no. Okay. I, I I have to I have to apologize. I um <clears throat> know nothing about. I have not looked into any sort of volcanoes. Oh, no worries. Um, I can show you. Yeah, amazing. You see all of these mini. Mini volcanoes, little vents just popping out of the side of Mauna Kea. Yeah. So that might that represent a later stage of uh, volcanism. Yeah, before this trip, I, I did do uh, some studying, but I did not study geology. No worries. There's a lot of geology out there to study, just like there's a lot of biology yes. out there to study. Yeah, we'll or you can be like me and just come and enjoy the ride. Yeah. Learn from Val in Virginia. Just <laughs> hang out. Fly. That's what I do. Just yeah. hang out, drink my coffee, and listen in. Yeah. All right, so here's a, here's a satellite image of Mauna Kea here. And you can okay. see kind of these little bumps. Oh, yeah. These are all little late-stage parasitic cones related to the Mauna Kea system. Interesting. So I think we might be seeing an underwater analog for something like wow. that here. It's a very that tentative. interesting. It's a very tentative interpretation. I may be wrong. Is that very common? Um, it's it's a fairly common thing that that you'll see in some later stage volcanoes. Okay. Maybe not everywhere, but um, yeah. Viewers at home, if you have access to Google Earth um, or Google Maps, Ooh, you you can cool. pull up satellite I'd love to get imagery. A view of that. Sorry. Cool. No, no, no apologies. Let's take a closer look. But if you want to look it up, uh, Dr. Val was just showing us uh, on Google Maps the a view looking down on on Mauna Kea to see some of those parasitic volcanic. Vents? Yeah, it's part of its post shield phase. Yeah, part of the post shield so phase. We learned about that in our last watch and yeah. pre shield, so shield, post shield, and then uh, don't tell me rejuvenating. Yes. Rejuvenating, boom, exactly. and then extinct. And then extinct. There we yep. go. Yeah, so Mauna Kea hasn't erupted in a few thousand years, uh, and it, it's in its post shield phase. So the, the volcano, um, the vast majority of it's already built. It's uh, getting further away from uh, the active hotspot uh, center where um, the melt's being generated. That's that's uh, partly it's it's uh, pretty close to Kilauea, and uh, we we think uh, really located under Kamehameha Kanaloa right now. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, there's there's still some melt supply coming into Mauna Kea. There's still there's still something molten down there, but it's just not going to erupt very frequently anymore. Yeah. It's it's in its waning stages, so it's it's uh, it's one of the elders. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And bouncing back over to the biology, is this the candelabra that we saw? It's looking like a candelabra, definitely. Wow, this one's big, um, and beautiful. Yeah, I was taking some pictures on the still cam, and now I'm going to go through. I think it's. Does it look like it's nodal wow. branched? Wow, it is. That's it is stunning. gorgeous. Yeah. Can yeah. That's an amazing Can we get the laser dark. lights turned off as well? It feels like we're in a ceremony or something. Yeah. The candle yeah. Yeah. is amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, so it does. And it's interesting. Now that um, I can't remember who it was who told us, but now I have air. It starts with the three. It starts with a trident here, and then everything branches off from that, which is really Fractaling amazing. from there? So we have, we've seen, um, that would mean that we've seen this sort of trident candelabra previously. Um, let me make certain oh we must have because how else would i have known about it i didn't do any study <laughs> <laughs> uh, no this is beautiful yeah we don't see a lot of there are some places where you see several of these but um there i don't think they're as terribly common um it could also just be that i am not as familiar with them so but yeah no they are they are stunning um the only name that I can get for them is their um, clade, which is old, but um, I do believe that this is a candelabra. Um, uh, we have Steve Oskovich joining us in the chat. Nice. Awesome. Mahalo, Steve. Oh, Aloha. clade I4 bamboo. Great. It's and the I4. Wonderful. Thank you, Steve. Is it, deal, yeah. it is beautiful. Isadella. Isadella, clade I four. Wonderful, yeah. This is such a beautiful specimen. Yep, Steve is one of our scientists ashore. He sails with the Nautilus every now and again, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, really helps us out with uh, uh, our, our uh, bio work and our field yeah. identifications. Could especially we get geologists like me. Could we get a partial zoom out to get a better idea of the size of this individual? Oh, awesome. Thank you, that's fantastic. Oh yeah, he, oh, yeah, he acknowledges that uh, this could potentially be a different genus based on uh, the revision that we were just talking about. Ah, revisions. <laughs> so grateful for them. Mm -hmm. So difficult to keep track of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, especially with such a huge shift, that takes a while to get, uh, to, to get used to. Yeah. You know, you kind of awesome. have to get Thank it in, you your, so much for that. In, in your muscle memory in some ways. So this is distinct. This is different than the candelabra. Um, yes, I believe but we are. similar branching part. pattern, but uh, different part zoomed out rather. Different species, maybe even different mm -hmm. genus. Yeah, yeah. So, um. always exciting to see. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Steve. Thank you to all of our viewers tuning in online as well, um, as well as our amazing science team ashore. We appreciate all the knowledge, appreciate all the questions, all the context, the stories you share with us. Can't possibly get to all of it that comes in um, through the various messages, but uh, we're glad you're exploring with us. Look at how sculpted oh, yeah. the bedding is around here. And look, we've got another one of those potentially another one of those um, isodella. Um, yeah. But we've got also several polyapagons, some more bamboos, some Walteria sponges. We've got unbranched bamboos as well as branched. I think we were seeing some of that branching pattern earlier in the dive as well, which is interesting. Um, 
Yeah, and they're they're seeming to like this uh, substrate too, which is still that hyaloclastite. Sequence oh, this is still the hyaloclastite. Yeah, I can see it in the is sides, it? and it's okay. And it's a softer rock, so it looks like it's been more sculpted over time by oh, various wonderful. forces. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it's kind of adopting this this rounded uh, appearance along those fractures. So this is, so this isn't the sheet flow that sort of has a similar, but is much more flat. Um, no, this, um, it's it's a little different from the sheet flows. So th this is volcano sedimentary, and we're seeing some thinner bedding, and uh, uh, yeah, in cross section, you can see where uh, some of the layers are a little less resistant, and being rounded, and it speaks to just how 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 highly altered and kind of how soft this rock is has become as a result of that uh, the alteration process. So it's it's um, a lot of the uh, minerals. Uh, uh, that were originally in like the, the unaltered rock have been altered to uh, more clay-like uh, minerals. They just uh, they just don't quite stand up to the test of time as well as something like a like a pyroxene. Uh -oh. Interesting. Just from light searching, it looks like candelabra might be used, kind of as common terminology to describe some of that, uh, uh, some of that branching structure, the Isadella branching structure, fan-like structure, but uh, maybe not even the official common name. Just a description of its morphology. Oh, great! Yeah. Yeah. Mahalo for joining us on this Ala Omwana Kai'uli expedition, the path of the deep sea traveler, the voyage into the Kai'uli, into the ocean depths in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. We are on our eighth dive. We're northwest of Holaniku. Um, in this in the marine, uh, in the National Marine Monument. We're seeing a lot of sponges. Uh, they kind of remind me of Ikea lamps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 Forgive me, <laughs> but beautiful ones. <laughs> no need to ask for forgiveness. We all learn by making connections to things we already know, associations, and uh, it's all familial. Things are, we, we learn through familiarity if we have no reference point, then there is no learning. So uh, yep. that reference point can be IKEA lamps, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> helps many of us who might not have, you know, the same reference points as those folks who have studied these structures yeah. in such intimate detail for a long period of time. So I appreciate that. It's cool designs too. Nature provides us with so many incredible inspiration for for our own designs and the more i think we can surround ourselves with things that look and feel like and and carry the the essence and mana of of spaces in the deep sea or in the forest or high up in the mountains or on our shallower tropical reefs the more connected we feel the nature and yeah. and uh, yeah. the richer our lives are yeah you know some of what we see some of these patterns uh they kind of blur the line between nature and mathematics. <laughs> they do, oh, yeah. It's incredible. Great math teacher, nature, maybe the best. Absolutely. We have mm -hmm. a cool field in Hawaii. Would um, it be possible to get a zoom on this coral? In ethno-mathematics. So teaching mathematics through our cultural relationship with the natural world around oh, us. Oh, wow. wow. That sounds yeah. like a math class I would do really well I, in. You would, you Pure would. Pure theory, I really, I really struggle with. Yeah. But up, like applied and like if I if I can get a visual or kind of understand it or feel it yep. um, in uh, a real world context, uh -huh. yeah, I got a nail. Awesome. So more that layers sounds of like meaning. a wonderful class. Yeah, I think uh, helped to create it by uh, some of our voyaging friends, one in particular, if Dr. Linda Furuto is listening. Aloha. Linda's one of our, one of our awesome voyaging va'a, ohana va'a family members. Yeah. Incredible program out at UH West Oahu, training a lot of educators and teaching math in this way, which is really exciting. That is. Can we get Amber? Amber? Yep, see me. I know a number of us are talking about taking images of beautiful corals like these that we're getting uh -huh. on this expedition and putting them up on our walls and 
in our homes, in our office spaces, in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, awesome. This one's interesting. It's, um, it's internodal. I can't see a node here where it branches. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, it's full zoom there. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Those, that does look pretty, pretty spectacular. The polyps of these bamboos are always so beautiful. Yeah. I think they're so stunning. Awesome, thank you so much. Is it a sponge? Oh wow. yeah, a large there's sponge, a, there's there. a big that's guy. awesome. Yeah. And then bamboo at the bottom of the screen, is it is that knocked over or is you it know, just it grown so like it, long it's just actually laying. it's still attached. Yeah. Um, so it looks like it might have um it just looks like it's leaning yeah. over. Yeah, I think it's just leaning over. There's a chance that the rock it was on sort of mm -hmm. tilted. Um but uh it, I think it's still able to catch um catch food in that position, so mm -hmm. it's probably fine. Yeah, I think we've seen that some that not every now and again seem to adopt a really recumbent lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Seems like a good life decision, doesn't it, Amber? Definitely. <laughs> 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 yeah. Big chunk of pile yeah, of plastic exposed the there. Yeah, there. Yeah, we're we're still in those deposits, so. Kukui, how many niskins have we pulled on this dive so Kukui far? Kukui happens, happens to be doing a ship to shore. shore. But I can, uh, I think we've had, well, let me, let me check. Let me just get thank over you, here. Thank you, Virginia. We have had one Niskin. Interesting. Yeah, I guess it's been sort of a, a sparser dive as far as uh, biology is concerned. Sorry, that sibling least, really picked up on the mic there. At least from what we can see, yeah. eDNA might tell us a different story. All kinds of sea creatures. Just hiding but from us. Just hiding right behind Hercules. Well, I guess then Atalanta would see them. Right behind At Atalanta. Yeah, we did see all those squid coming down, and uh, Zach was uh, telling us last night about oh. how they kept going after the cable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I would. W several of us went and watched it last night. Catalina actually um, uh, told us that she'd been able to see some of the activity, and so she's like, we should go check out the back. And we did, and it was the best. It was so cool. There were so many, so many squid. I love it. Oh, we've got another cool little sponge there. Yeah. These rock features are beautiful. They are. Yeah, you can see how heavily sculpted yeah. uh, these these uh, hyaloclastites have gotten. Very dynamic landscape. Oh, that's on this, very uh, yellow. Um. Those aren't what are the those? same. Can we, can we get a zoom on these yeah. uh, things? <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> these thingy babobs. Unidentified recumbent objects. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Is it more pumice? I don't oh. think it's pumice this time. It Actually, it almost looks like that rock has been cut in. Yeah. Have you been down oh, here yeah, with yeah, the rocks all, Val? What did I tell you about coming here? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, rocks that just kind of split open and just, okay. <laughs> so is this the yellow, this we is the yellow hyaloclastite? Yeah. Just like vibrant yellow? Yeah, just like for whatever reason it, it broke open. Wow. It was just hanging out on the sea floor. Oh. Okay. okay. Amber? I don't want to meet the creature responsible for that. Yeah. Who's been smashing rocks down here? That could, that could be just regular geology at work, too. <laughs> Not exactly uh, sure what what would have done this but uh nice i saw a couple point. yeah 
I saw a couple of assaults that were split open like this uh, a little bit earlier in our watch. Okay. So, yeah. Which is interesting because there's not like a cliff face that they would have fallen off of. Right, yeah. So, how they broke cool, there we go. Yeah, sorry guys, I, I, I took the rock saw down last night. <laughs>